sleep. And he climbed up onto the second floor balcony, got through the sliding door, and shot her multiple times and left her for dead. Now, that gun was either traffic or stolen. Let's talk about trafficking. This is why we have the trafficking bill under consideration. Now, we know that if the trafficking bill is passed with one gun, gun a month, uh, uh, and the other provisions, that uh, guns will still be trafficked from Maine, New Hampshire, and southern states. However, we know that it is only the last brick in the wall that, that stems the river of life. And once that is done, who will say which brick is most important? Now, the other question is, is the gun may be stolen? Now, this, if you, the failure to report stolen guns is a mere 200 bucks. Now, Representative Linsky has brought a very important provision uh, for which is needs, needs exploration of this question. Illustrated far too well, when a man attacks a woman in Boston, she fends him off, end, ending up with his wallet and identification in her hand, turns it into Boston police, who do absolutely nothing. That same criminal goes on to kidnap, rob, and murder a woman in Saudi, which we're all now familiar with. I'm going to make three simple points. The first is that Massachusetts firearms laws, and specifically the 1998 gun control law, have caused crime to increase. We do not need more of the same. I advocate legislation, legislation that my fellow gun owners, through the Gun Owners Action League and others, advocate. We have legislation pending. Those are the laws that we are interested in. We are not interested in more restrictive laws that make law-by citizens new classes of criminal. Second, other New England states with less restrictive laws have lower rates of crime than Massachusetts. And third, even when controlling for the urban environment, similar sized cities, etc., other cities in New England outside of Massachusetts also have lower crime rates. I've already left, left copies of testimony with your assistance so that you can look at the data that I present. But for the crowd here, I'll be very brief. I show the Boston murder rate dropping over time until 1998, at which time it was tracking the national average. In 1998, when Mass enacted its laws, Suddenly, we buck the national average, and the murder rate in downtown Boston changes from approximately 5 per 100,000 people to almost 15 per 100,000 people. <coughs> Second, even when you look at gun murder rates, never mind murder rates, if you look at gun murder rates, the most restrictive state is Massachusetts by law. It bans certain firearms, it requires licenses to be just to purchase a firearm, and it allows additional local discretion by local issuing folks, the, the, the police folks. Massachusetts has a gun murder rate of approximately 1.75 per 100,000. That's just gun murder rates. As and, an as an and Al, where are you from? I'm living in Westford, Massachusetts right now, but I grew up in Wilmington. I was a class of 86 here at Wilmington High School. I understand you're on the track team? I did. I ran for Frank Kelly on the track team for four years. That's excellent. And also, you said at the time that actually Wilmington had a gun club? When my uncle went to school <clears throat> in the 1970s, they had a gun club here at school. Yes, they, um, I believe my, my English teacher, Mr. Joyce, was the head of that gun club and they used to shoot over at the police station. That's amazing. And as far as this uh, public forum today, how do you feel about this? The forum, I, I think, is being run very, very well. One of the things that I, I don't like to hear is I don't like it when people stand up and say, well, data shows that Massachusetts is safer than other states because it has more restrictive gun laws. What I did was <coughs> I presented the committee with actual data from the FBI crime files that shows very clearly that Massachusetts has a higher rate of murder and gun violence than places with less restrictive laws, such as New Hampshire, and Vermont. And the other thing that I did was I showed how crime in very specific urban cities of, of similar size is also higher in Massachusetts than in other states. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Al. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a great one. You too. Bye -bye. Good luck. Sure. I'm Representative David Linsky, Democrat from Natick. I'm Chairman of the House uh, Committee on Post Audit and Oversight, and I'm the principal 
House sponsor of House Bill 3253, which is a comprehensive bill attempting to reduce gun violence and gun deaths in Massachusetts. Massachusetts actually has relatively strict uh, gun licensing and gun safety laws, uh, but there are a lot of loopholes in Massachusetts laws that we can fill, and if we can do that, I'm convinced we can save a lot of lives. Um, most importantly, Massachusetts is one of only seven states in the country that doesn't send its mental health commitment data into the national instant check system to see whether or not uh, you've been committed to a mental health institution when you go buy a, a gun anywhere in the country. So what happens is if you're from Massachusetts and uh, you go to buy a gun, they check to see whether or not you've been committed to a mental health institution in every state except Massachusetts. We're one of only seven states to do that. In addition, there are a lot of uh, uh, loopholes in the way that we license people uh, before they get a, a gun in Massachusetts. For example, you have to take a, a safety course, but um, as part of that safety course, they don't actually require you to shoot a gun, know how to load it, know how to handle that gun safely. It's sort of like taking driver training, just the classroom part, but you don't actually drive a car before you get your license. That's just stupid because if you're going to own a gun, you should at least know how to handle it safely. Uh, like I said, Massachusetts has uh, some of the strictest laws in the country, but there are loopholes out there and we can do better. Uh, you know, since Newtown, about 20,000 people in this country have died as a result of gun violence. We lose 32,000 people a year. Over half of them are suicides, but about 11 to 12,000 of them are, are homicides. That's way too many. The United States of America is the greatest country in the world. We're a leader in arts, we're a leader in science, we're a leader in technology, we're a leader in education. We're also a world leader in gun deaths. We should be ashamed of that because we can do a lot better. So I'm here today in Wilmington to try to convince this committee to do the right thing and try to make every town in Massachusetts just a little bit safer. Thank you, David. Sure. Um, yes, my name is Molly Malloy. I am one of the co-leaders of the Massachusetts chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. And we are a grassroots group of parents who simply asking for common sense solutions to the epidemic of gun violence in our country. Um, we were formed the night of the, of the Newtown Massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Um, our founder is a mom of five kids and she opened up her laptop and started a Facebook page. And since then, um, we have grown um, tremendously. We have 100 chapters already in 40 states. And what we're just trying to do is um, help individuals um, find a way to speak out about this problem and help them advocate for the common sense solutions that everyone wants. Um, we're nonpartisan. And uh, we believe there can be middle ground answers to uh, the uh, proliferation of gun violence in our culture. Um, we're asking for strengthened background checks um, all over the country, uh, statewide, and at the national level. We are asking for um, the reduction of um, ammunition magazines, uh, which could be available. We are um, calling for the uh, elimination of high capacity uh, military um, style assault weapons um, and other similar uh, measures. And so we're here today testifying um, uh, in um, Wilmington to try to help the state laws uh, become even more strong in Massachusetts. Very good. Thank you so much, Molly. Is there anything else? Okay, I'm from Lowell, Massachusetts. I'm a legal gun owner here in Massachusetts. I had the opportunity to thank the committee today for their service, for being on the committee and hearing our testimony and allowing me the opportunity to speak with them. And I wanted to relay a personal story. Uh, my father was a police officer in Florida and he unfortunately was hit by some college students drunk driving and he lost the ability to provide for our family in law enforcement due to that accident, he almost died. Um, it really comes down to personal responsibility. We try to legislate driving under the influence. Unfortunately, that does not stop individuals from making a poor choice and driving while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. 
the same is true with gun ownership. You can't legislate responsibility. Individuals who choose not to exercise that responsibility, again, will fail to comply with any laws that this committee may pass to restrict gun ownership. I'm a legal gun owner. I exercise my personal responsibility in protecting myself, my children, my home, my family. However, that individual who chooses not to use responsibility will impact me should this committee restrict my ability to protect myself. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And family. <laughs>